Hi everyone, in this video we're going to prove that every Lipschitz function on a set D is uniformly continuous on a set D. I didn't write D here, uh, but I'll write it over here on the side. So what does it mean for a function to be a Lipschitz function? So we say a function is Lipschitz, or has a, the Lipschitz condition, if the following holds. So F is Lip, and I always have a hard time spelling it, Schitz, Lipschitz, on D, if there exists a constant m such that for all x, y, and d, we have f of x minus f of y is less than or equal to m times x minus y. So a function with this property is said to have the Lipschitz uh, condition or is said to be a Lipschitz function. Here, these functions will assume that um, X and Y are elements, and D and D is a subset of some n-dimensional space. It doesn't really matter uh, if we use the real numbers, if we use the plane, so we'll just pretend everything is in n-dimensions. Everything is okay in that regard. Uniformly continuous is a little bit different. So F is, I'll just say unicontinuous on D if for all epsilon greater than zero, so for every epsilon greater than zero, we can find some delta greater than zero such that for all x, y, and d, with the distance between x and y being less than delta, so x minus y less than delta, we have f of x minus f of y less than epsilon. So that's what it means for a function to be uniformly continuous on d. So it's almost clear. People say, oh, it's really easy. It's clearly true. If you look it up in a book, it'll say it's obvious, but Let's go through uh, the proof uh, carefully. Let's go through it carefully, and let's prove that every Lipschitz function is, is uniformly continuous. So proof. I think we can prove it as we go through it, and if I need to do some work on the side, I'll, I'll do it and I'll call it scratch work. So suppose uh, your function is Lipschitz. So suppose f is Lipschitz. Lipschitz, I have a hard time spelling it on D, which is a subset of Rn. So then, that means there exists a constant m, such that for all x, y, and d, we have the Lipschitz condition. So f of x minus f of y in absolute value is less than or equal to m x minus y. Okay. So that's what it means for a function to be Lipschitz. Now we have to prove that it's uniformly continuous. So first of all, it doesn't say anything about m, right? It just says m is a constant. So let's start off by uh, considering the case if m is equal to zero. So if m is equal to zero, uh, just let epsilon be greater than zero. Choose any delta. It doesn't matter what delta is then we're just going to go through the formalities of the proof, right? So for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta. Then for all x, y, and d, with the absolute value of x minus y less than d, just going through the motions, right? It's important to be perfect in mathematics. We have the absolute value of f of x, or not, sorry, magnitude of f of x minus f of y. We know that that's less than or equal to zero times x minus y, which is equal to zero, which is less than epsilon, and so the function is uniformly continuous. So if m is equal to zero, it's clear, but it's important to write it. Like, if you're taking a class, and you're turning this in, and you say clear, like, you know, the person grading, it might be like, oh, well, do they really know how to show it? I, I feel like a lot of people don't, don't go through these steps, so it might be clear, but it's good to make sure that you know it's clear. So if m equals zero, we can let our epsilon be greater than zero, choose any delta with x, y, and then for all x, y, and d with this condition, we have that this is true uh, here. So satisfy the condition. If m is not equal to zero, so in other words, if it's positive, you see m can't be negative because this is uh, a magnitude, so it's zero or it's positive. So this can't be negative, it's impossible. So if it's not zero, it must be positive. So let epsilon be greater than zero. And then we're gonna choose our delta now. Our delta, so m is positive, so delta has to be positive. So we can do delta equals epsilon over m. Then, 
for all x, y, and d with the magnitude of x minus y less than delta, we have the magnitude of f of x minus f of y. This is less than or equal to m, x minus y. I chose it because it's, it's clear now. Watch this. This is m. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Mom's messed up. Less than m times delta. Delta is epsilon over m, so this is equal to m times epsilon over m, which is equal to epsilon, and that completes the proof. I like to use this symbol here to finish my proof. So just a formality, it's a really clear statement. Most people will look at this and say, well, obviously, um, but it's, it's good to go through the motions, in particular to consider the case when m is equal to zero. So um, if you're taking advanced calculus or mathematical analysis and you see this and it says clear or if it's a homework assignment, don't forget to, to carefully you know, go over your proof. I hope this video has been helpful to anyone out there who is learning some uh, mathematical analysis. Take care.